Union overwhelmingly rejected a pay offer. The NEU, along with three other teaching unions, has rejected an offer which included a £1,000 one-off payment and a 4.3% pay rise for most staff in September. Today's walkout was the fifth undertaken by educators this year, causing major disruptions for students. Labour MP for Leeds East Richard Bergen says striking is a last resort. What we're seeing is people fighting back because they've got no choice. And there are ways to fund this. For example, just equalising capital gains tax with income tax, which used to be the case even for a period under Thatcher's government in the 80s, would raise more than enough money to give every single public sector worker in this country an inflation-matching pay rise. So the money is there. The government doesn't seem to have the right priorities uh, because the government should be putting our public services and working people across this country first, and I'm afraid they're not. Now, consumer news and food inflation went up another record high in April. But lower prices are on the horizon. That's according to news today from the British Retail Consortium. Grocery prices rose by 15.7%. That's last month, the biggest annual increase in records going back almost two decades. The figures also show that prices for non-food items slowed down because of spring discounts on clothing and furniture. And staying with consumer news, house prices showed signs of stabilising last month. That's according to the mortgage lender Nationwide. The price of a home rose by 0.5% after falling for the last seven months. Compared to this time last year, the average house price was down 2.7%. Now, some very special news today, particularly if you're a Wrexham football club fan. Wrexham FC have kicked off a special victory parade today to celebrate being promoted to the English Football League. Take a look. <laughs> Well, if you're watching on television, you can see thousands of fans are lining the streets alongside Hollywood owners Ryan Reynolds and Rob McClenney as the club marks its return after 15 years. They won the league with 111 points. That's a record for the top five divisions of football. They're the third oldest professional football team in the world quite a day today for Wrexham with their victory parade. Now, King Charles's coronation is expected to provide a £120 million boost to pubs and restaurants across the country. The British Beer and Pub Association says local pubs and breweries are planning to pour at least 62 million pints over the bank holiday weekend and pubs will be allowed to stay open until one o'clock in the morning. And ahead of the coronation, the King and the Queen Consort have met with Rishi Sunak and Sir Keir Starmer today. A reception was held at the Palace of Westminster ahead of the coronation, along with the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition. The monarch also met with other members of Parliament. And in case you haven't seen it today, Kensington Palace has released a surprise photograph of Princess Charlotte to mark her eighth birthday. The new photograph shows the princess smiling with the family's cocker spaniel named Orla. The princess is third in line to the throne behind Prince William and her brother George. You're up to date on GB News. More news as it happens. Breaking tonight, this is Dan Wooten. Uh, obviously, you would usually be turning in for Jacob Rees-Mogg at this time, but breaking tonight, security sources have told GB News that there has been an incident inside Buckingham Palace grounds and the media area where we have been broadcasting from all day and where international crews are preparing for the King's coronation have now been evacuated. There's reportedly been one arrest and all the roads around the palace have been sealed off. So we can cross now to Jacob Rees-Mogg, who has just been evacuated from the palace. Jacob, uh, obviously you were meant to be doing your show at this time, but this seems like quite a concerning situation at Buckingham Palace. What do we know? Well, I, I don't know um, very much that uh, we were waiting to go on air. I was looking forward to describing the royal standard flushing over Buckingham Palace and the tulips behind me standing 
as upright as guardsmen. And instead of that, people came to us wearing yellow tabards, the uniform of officialdom throughout the country nowadays, I fear, to say there was an incident unspecified, and we all had to go, and could we go immediately? As always, you get no proper explanation of what's going on, no time scale for when it would end, but just an element of, um, I fear, not keep calm and carry on, but let's hustle and bustle and make a bit of a fuss. So we'd have quite happily kept calm and carried on, but we weren't allowed to, which is why we are now in an exclusive porter cabin, luxury, me with Michael Cole, the great royal expert, um, broadcasting to the good viewers of GB News, uh, not with the fine surroundings we were expecting, with a beautiful uh, late spring sky behind us, uh, but with the background of a rather grubby porter cabin. So that's where we are um, at the moment. No news, no details on what's happened. As it all looked quite quiet as we looked out, I don't know that it's going to be a very serious scare. It's probably somebody's just left a box of black magic uh, on the sidewalk, on the pavement, and uh, the police came across it or some busybody came across it and they rather overreacted. That's my guess. Uh, let's hope it's nothing more serious than that. OK. Well, Jacob, I've just got some breaking news, actually. An official statement now has come in from the Met Police regarding this incident at the palace. And it says officers quickly detained a man at around 1900 hours after he approached the gates of Buckingham Palace and threw a number of items suspected to be shotgun cartridges into the palace grounds. These have been recovered and will be taken for specialist examination. There have been no reports of any shots fired or any injuries. The man has been arrested on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon and will be taken into custody. Cordons are in place after the man was also found to be in possession of a suspicious bag. Specialists are in attendance and will assess the item. So this seems to be a very serious incident indeed. Uh, we're going to cross now, I believe, to Ben well, Briscoe. He is the GB News Director of Programmes. Uh, who has spoken directly to police at the scene. Ben Briscoe, what can you tell us? Good evening, Dan. I'm currently standing on Buckingham Gate, which is at the south side of Buckingham Palace. There's a massive police presence down here tonight. Police have cordoned off the roads and have confirmed to me tonight, in the last few moments, that there has been an incident inside the grounds of Buckingham Palace. An arrest has been made. I can tell you all of the roads around here have been completely shut off. It's in a very, very eerie presence. At the moment, I'm literally standing right next door to the palace gate. And I can tell you, Dan, what was a very bustling scene literally moments ago is now completely devoid of any people. People have been evacuated, but it looks en masse here this evening. And, of course, this is a huge security operation. Uh, this was really uh, the worst nightmare of the Met Police. And it looks like shotgun cartridges uh, are the big issue that have been thrown into the grounds of Buckingham Palace. Yes, I mean, the police not confirming what the incident was this evening, but that there was one. Uh, shotgun cartridges are news to me here standing on the south side. Um, of uh, the palace this evening. But as I said, a massive police presence are now. They have very, very quickly cordoned off the area. I was in the media um, area just, just, just literally moments ago. Um, and we have now been removed from that area, as I said, um, nobody being allowed in or out of the, of, the, of the roads around Buckingham Palace at the moment. OK, Ben Briscoe, look, keep, keep there for us and see what you can find out. Uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, so we now know that this was an incident, perhaps, perhaps uh, an attempted attack of some form, but it looks like no injuries, no shots fired, which will be a huge relief for this massive police operation. It does show you, Jacob, how high the stakes are, though, ahead of the coronation when, where security well, is concerned. You know, I think one's got to get... Dan, I think one's got to get a sense of proportion that what we've heard so far is that somebody threw... Uh, a few um, shotgun uh, cartridges, um, which wouldn't have done any harm to anybody. And they can't have been that fussed about it because they detained him at 7 o'clock and then they evacuated us at 8 o'clock. So I can't really think what they were doing for the hour and why they suddenly decide an hour later that they need to evacuate people. That seems to me to be 
surprising. And I think you always need calmness with security. I don't think one wants to get too excitable about it. And I'm afraid all this evacuation seems to me to be rather excitable. I mean, I may turn out to be wrong, of course. Um, but, but a few um, shotgun cartridges doesn't seem to me to necessitate uh, a major evacuation. No, that is true. That is very true. Although, perhaps, given the uh, scale of the event that is to come, uh, there is a sense of real caution. Of course. Well, Dan, I've got with me uh, Michael Cole, who's such an expert on these matters, and I think it'd be a good idea to consult him, because I must confess, he didn't like being told what to do by men in orange tabards, did you, Michael? I didn't. I have to confess that. But before we go any further, and I've spent more than half of my life around camera crews, I want to praise and commend our camera crew here, who decamped 50 yards or more, would you say, to this porter cabin in no time flat in order that we would be on the air. When I saw all this fuss with the police who are now looking through the door and they've come to give us a new message, I actually thought that the King had arrived to make an inspection because Her Majesty the Queen always used to come and see the press at Commonwealth Head of Government meetings. Anyway, we're just getting the latest word from uh, the uh, Metropolitan Police, and I don't know what it is. Uh, we're going to have to evacuate now. The police are live with us now, and I telling us that we've got to evacuate even I don't from this see how why we could possibly cabin. have to move. So I'm very sorry to say that it is um, good evening for me for the time being, as I think that was probably a controlled explosion in the background. That's what it sounded like to me. Uh, we will no doubt find out later, but as soon as it's happened, do they need us still to evacuate? Because that's now been and gone. They still need us to evacuate. Well, there, oh, well, may, be, let's there, may, there may be more to come. Let, but, let, perhaps my sang foie has been unduly um, sang and not enough foie, uh, let, if I've got let, my French may right. We, may we actually get this officially, because we're here to work, we're accredited. And you've been in a war zone in your many, beginning of your Many career. war zones, under pressure, beaten up, covered civil wars, great disturbances, uh, all-out wars around the world, Beirut for 10 years, civil war. Can we just find out, because overreaction is not what the British are about, we do have a certain amount of decorum uh, at, on occasions like this, and so I want to hear the final word, I want to see a policeman here telling us that we can, can no longer broadcast. I think there may be somebody coming. Is there, is there somebody, would somebody like to come and tell us, because I think we ought to, we owe it to our We have viewers. to have this officially. We have to have this officially. Somebody because like we're to going to be taken off the air. Officially. Could you come and tell us, please? Yeah, yeah. I would, uh, yeah, yeah. Could, we, would a police officer present herself or herself? Sorry, guys, we have to leave now. Okay. okay. We what have, what is the order? Are you ordering us the, to come off the air? I am, yes. The order is from okay. the police. We have to go off the air. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt okay. this broadcast. Thank you, Thank you for your patience. J Jacob Rees-Mogg. This has been Mog. the State of the Nation tonight. Okay, Jacob Rees-Mogg, do stay safe. Uh, I love how calm my brilliant colleague is. There were uh, some form of loud sounds in the background there. Jacob Rees-Mogg believed and reported it was a controlled explosion. At this point, the police are saying uh, there are no reports of gunshots. So let me just bring you the statement from the Met Police. Uh, officers quickly detained a man around 1,900 hours after he approached the gates of Buckingham Palace and threw a number of items suspected to be shotgun cartridges into the palace grounds. These have been recovered and will be taken for specialist examination. There have been no reports of any shots fired or injuries. The man has been arrested on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon and will be taken into custody. Cordons are in place after the man was also found to be in possession of a suspicious bag. Specialists are in attendance and will assess the item. As we have just seen live on air, Jacob Rees-Mogg and Michael Cole were reporting from a caravan uh, behind uh, the special studio that has been set up at Buckingham Palace. Now, there was some form of explosion uh, that they heard in the background while broadcasting live. We're told it was likely to be a controlled explosion and then they were forcibly taken off air by police who evacuated them from the temporary studio. So we're going to cross now to Will Geddes, the security expert who joins me now live. Will, uh, 
Look, Jacob Rees-Mogg says we should keep very calm about this, and of course we must. It was very likely that there would be people who would try and disrupt the coronation, which is why there has been such a massive security operation around it. But is there anything that you're hearing so far tonight, Will, of concern? And... Uh, this is a time where not only the Metropolitan Police, but all the various relevant agencies, MI5, counterterrorism and the like, will be on their game in terms of looking at any potential disruption, uh, individual that could pose a threat or group that could pose their threat. And as you can imagine, the, the far reaching and wide range of threats that could be accommodated within that consideration is extremely broad. We have uh, organized direct action groups like Stop Oil who may just want to be disruptive, but you also have those fixated persons that are a permanent and consistent threat to the royal family uh, who are always wanting to get close to them for one reason or another. Uh, Will Geddes, we are learning that His Majesty the King Charles III is at Buckingham Palace. Uh, will that mean that the police are extra cautious? Yeah, absolutely. They, they will be. Any time that the, the resident monarch, and monarch is actually in residence, uh, they will be. They, they, there is a very, very considerable uh, fabric of security around the monarch, and especially now, as you can imagine, obviously, in, a, in advance of this big weekend. So, you know, he will and the family, the most immediate family, will be kept incredibly safe. Um, but to see an incident like this doesn't come as a huge surprise. Uh, in many ways, this is almost, I mean, if, to try and look at the glass as half full, these things are never good. They're, 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 they're never reassuring to a certain extent. But to look at the glass as half full, this is a fantastic test and rehearsal of the capabilities and contingencies that the various agencies have in place in terms of how they can respond. This may not be the last instant before this weekend. There could be others. But what it will do is it will show those agencies how they can plug any gaps that they may not have considered or any gaps that there may be within the security, how those could be considered and what they can do in contingency. Uh, do you have any idea, Will Geddes, why they would have gone for a controlled explosion if it was only shotgun cartridges thrown into the grounds of Buckingham Palace? Well, this would be pure speculation on my part, to be absolutely frank. But for them to uh, undertake a controlled explosion would be where they felt that there was a necessity that further or closer interrogation by hand or by a human individual would be too potentially risky. Um, to control a, a, a detonation on a particularly suspect or suspicious package uh, is a, a fail-safe and secure process to doing so. Now. In terms of this particular circumstances, from the little intelligence we've got right now from the police reports, and again, I always say that we have to err on the side of caution right. because, you know, again, we should only rely on information that's coming from the authorities directly on social media. There will be various different speculations, but there was supposedly some firearms armaments, whether these be shotgun shells or others that were involved in this particular incident, if it is in, in fact the same incident. But I would say that the police, in terms of the controlled detonation and also immediate evacuation of anybody in the immediate area, uh, is to err on the side of caution in the event that it wasn't perhaps one individual acting alone. No, indeed, of course. Uh, and everyone should keep calm. There was an expectation that there would be a potential security threat ahead of the coronation. In saying that, Will Geddes, I've obviously been covering the royal family for a very long time. I cannot remember, tell me if I'm wrong, but I cannot remember a controlled explosion taking place at one of the royal palaces in the past. No, I'd agree with you, uh, and nor can I. I cannot remember the last time something in such close proximity to a royal residence has taken place. However, however having said that, uh, regardless of where that particular package or suspect device is located, whether it be uh, two yards away from the royal residence or whether it be 200 yards away, 
the mitigation of controlled explosions will be considerate to the environment. Now, bearing in mind around Buckingham Palace, around the Mall and the surrounding areas, this is a very sterile environment. The only few people that can really get in there right now are those that are controlled by the Metropolitan Police. So in terms of mitigation of a controlled explosion, it's probably far better doing it there than it would be, say, even, for example, in the middle of Piccadilly Circus, where there are members of the general public milling about. So it's always going to consider a number of different factors as to whether it's worth doing or not. But I agree with you. I cannot remember the last time something so close to a, pro a, a raw residence has taken place. Mm. Security expert Will Geddes, please just stand by because I want to update viewers who might be tuning in for the first time exactly what's happened at Buckingham Palace tonight. We were due to go on air at 8pm with Jacob Rees-Mogg, positioned live at the GB News Coronation Studio outside of Buckingham Palace. Word came through about 10 minutes to 8 uh, that that studio complex was being evacuated because of some sort of incident within Buckingham Palace where one person had been arrested. As you saw, Jacob was initially broadcasting from within a caravan inside the studio complex, which has been constructed at Buckingham Palace ahead of the coronation. But uh, what happened is that they were forcibly removed as the police released a statement confirming uh, that one man had been arrested after a number of items suspected to be shotgun cartridges were thrown into the grounds of Buckingham Palace. While Jacob was broadcasting, we also heard an explosion, most likely a controlled explosion, probably uh, by police being very cautious because we know that King Charles is in residence at Buckingham Palace where he has been meeting the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, uh, this afternoon. So we're going to cross back now to Buckingham Palace and our Director of Programmes, Ben Briscoe. Ben, can you confirm, please, if King Charles is still in residence at Buckingham Palace? Is the standard flying? Dan, from my position on the south of the palace, I can clearly see the royal standard is flying high above the palace, which would confirm that King Charles is still here um, uh, at the palace itself. I've just been told in the last few moments by police that the, that the palace and the surrounding areas are in total lockdown. So nothing is going in, nothing is going out. Literally 10 minutes ago, we heard very clearly an explosion sound. Now, it's not been confirmed whether it was some sort of controlled explosion on any sort of suspicious device, but there was definitely a very, very loud explosion here at Buckingham Palace. I've asked the police, are you ruling out any other secondary devices? They can't rule that out at this stage. But as it stands, the palace, the surrounding areas are in total lockdown, and it doesn't look like it's going to be lifted anytime soon. OK, because at this point, we just had the one statement from Buckingham Palace... Uh, sorry, from the Met Police. Uh, but the officers on the scene were not able to confirm to you, Ben Briscoe, that the loud explosion... Did you, did you hear the explosion yourself, Ben? Absolutely. It was incredibly loud, Dan. I'm okay. standing... I said, literally, I can see that, that the front gates of Buckingham Palace from where I am... I'm literally probably 100 metres from the front of the palace. The explosion, incredibly loud, piercing the atmosphere this evening. It's a very, very calm night here. There is currently military police um, entering uh, the, the gates on the south side here. Um, obviously a large presence anyway because of the events that are happening mm. uh, this weekend. But, you know, again, the presence of police and military police in particular um, in, in, in Red Berets has increased exponentially over the last hour. And Ben Briscoe, our Director of Programming at Buckingham Palace, just confirming that King Charles is in residence at Buckingham Palace. So uh, this incident is going on with the King there. He had met the Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, early in the day. It is worth just pointing out some of the enhanced security operation at Buckingham Palace for the, coronation, for the coronation, snipers uh, will be positioned on rooftops, plain clothes, police officers set to walk among the crowds and blockades will stop vehicles being driven into spectators and pavement barriers running for miles also being erected. So a very large security operation. I believe we can cross back now to our very own Jacob Rees-Mogg, who has now been evacuated uh, from the palace grounds. Jacob, what can you tell us? What happened? And Spencer House is there too. Well, what, what, what happened was that um, we were broadcasting 
and then we were asked if we would leave the broadcasting hut and after we were asked to leave there was a bang that Ben was telling you about which I think uh, viewers and listeners would have heard it was loud enough to have been picked up by the microphone at which point a young policeman came in and asked us if we formally would move out that, because I'm um, with Michael Cole who's reported from war zones and was keen to carry on reporting feeling that the danger to us wasn't particularly great and that it was interesting to our viewers to hear what was going on. Michael. First of all, let's just say that the young policeman who asked us to leave was absolutely immaculately polite absolutely. and he, he made it very clear and I think we needed firm instructions before we actually ceased broadcasting. And secondly, I've been working with camera crews for 56 years and I want to give commendations to our camera crew of GB News because they up and twice they've moved and were back on air within six or seven minutes uh, and of I, being evicted. And I think our camera crew has got the pictures of the arrest taking place and that that's exclusive to GB News. So that's a really important picture. We know who uh, the villain of the piece is, that his picture has been taken. He's known to our viewers and the police are obviously now dealing with this and by the sounds of it the bomb disposal squad have been involved. Um, the, as far as we know the controlled explosion went off but the evacuation continued after the controlled explosion. The, the bizarre thing is that there was a whole hour between the apprehension of this suspect and he's only a suspect and actually us being asked to move. When I was first told to clear the area and move from our pavilion uh, to the hut. Uh, I thought it was because His Majesty the King was coming for an inspection because quite often, in fact always, Her Majesty the Queen at Commonwealth Head of Government meetings, she always came during the meeting or ahead of it to meet the press and I thought perhaps this, there was so much officialdom going on and so much, shall we say, anxiety, I won't call it panic, that, that I thought that something was afoot. But, um, you know, these things happen, uh, they have to take precautions, if they didn't take precautions they would be criticised. Uh, so so it was all done properly and correctly and we'll actually hear the, uh, the outcome. But the bizarre thing was why was there an hour between the arrest and the fact that it was suddenly necessary for us all to move? And people may want to know where we're reporting from now. We're in Green Park so behind us in that direction is Buckingham Palace and in that direction Lancaster House and of course Clarence House which is the residence of the King rather than Buckingham Palace which he's currently using because of the major restaurant restoration program going on uh, primarily as an office rather than staying there uh, overnight. And uh, all these people here are mainly technicians because there's a worldwide press here covering the great event and there's a lot of uh, logistics that are required and uh, they, it's all been very orderly and all been very pleasant uh, uh, rather like a you know a bomb drill at work every now and then or a fire drill. Yes, I think there's very much that atmosphere here, that there's no uh, panic, people are calmly going about uh, their business. The only thing is we have been evacuated, so rather than having a luxurious tent to be broadcasting from with an excellent view uh, of Buckingham Palace, we're in a rather scruffy looking green park which has been boarded off for the media compound because obviously you need to keep the media safely away from everybody else. Thank Indeed. You, Michael. Indeed. But let's talk about the coronation. coronation. That's what we're here for. That's what the viewers want to hear about. And Princess Anne, the Princess Royal's comment today about not having uh, a, a limited monarchy, a limited royal family. Uh, this was uh, vintage Princess Royal, Princess Anne. I have interviewed Princess Anne. Uh, in fact, it was on the high purple plain of Burma near the Irrawaddy River. And uh, interviewing Princess Anne, should I say there is a famous phrase which involves stone and blood. Uh, and uh, that comes to mind when I actually interviewed her. So congratulations to CBC of Canada who got this interview. Now one thing that the Princess Royal says about her older brother it run, comes home to me and she says that what you see with the King is what you get and he will not be changed and he will do what he wants to do. And I think that is a factor of um, uh, many, many years of being criticised, often unfairly, he certainly feels it, and he's inured to it. I'm not saying he doesn't care about it, but he's inured to it. And he's got to a point where he has decided that what he wants to do, he's going to do. 
And if people like it, he'll be very pleased. And if they don't, he will still be pleased because he feels that he's done the right thing. He's his own man. But the Princess Royal's point that's got the most attention is this idea of a smaller royal family. And I think she's said something really important because the Duke of Kent, the Duke of Gloucester, the Duchess of Gloucester doing an amazing amount of work, but they're not in their first youth anymore. And no. their effort needs to be replicated by younger royals because they bring incredible pleasure to people. I've met people who met Princess Alexandra 30 years ago mm. and they still remember what she said and how charming she was. She was a great stalwart, particularly in the early years before the Queen's children started to grow up. She was always there and doing great things. But you know, I actually think the King hasn't put a foot wrong since he succeeded his mother on September the 8th. Not a foot wrong. And I think he's right about this. I think he's right to concentrate and want the focus to be on the direct line of succession. That's the Prince of Wales, Prince William, uh, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, who's eight today. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. to her. And, and Prince Louis. I think it's important because in straightened times, uh, people don't want to see 30, we'll never see 30 members of the royal family on the balcony but again. But don't they want to see a royal going to open the new office of their favourite charity, going to open the uh, local Rotary's 100th anniversary? Your, your effort, your all of these sorts of things are so important and they connect the monarchy, they connect the king to his faithful subjects via uh, uh, another member of the family. Well, you're rooted in the countryside and you believe that and I, I sort of believe it, but I'll tell you the contrary to that. I think less is definitely more. When I started, I wrote my first royal story in 1962, which is uh, a long, long, long time ago. And in those days, every single royal story received coverage in the local media and the regional media. It doesn't happen anymore. Um, a lot of these, and the people in Buckingham Palace, the press office, are very, very frustrated when good things happen and they don't get public notice. Perhaps it'll become a little bit more special when there's a royal event, when there's a royal visit. And I think fewer people will not be will not be a, a, a detraction to it. I think the, the value is in, in the quality of those visits. I, of course, Her Majesty the Queen even said to me on one occasion to drop a name, a big very one. Nicely a big one. Yes, a big very, one. very large a big one. She so said, to the ground. 50% of my job is being seen. And that is why she always wore bright colours, so that she could be seen. She didn't like those bright colours necessarily. She was much happier in country tweeds. Of course it's being seen, but I think, uh, I think the, the, the King is, is right in this. Of course, I think he's, what he's really doing, he's channeling his grandfather, King George VI. And King George VI said that the royal family was best when it was just us four, meaning himself, Queen Elizabeth, mm. who later became the Queen Mother, and the two princesses, princesses Elizabeth yes. uh, uh, and Margaret. And I think he's subconsciously or consciously doing that. So I don't think it's a bad thing, and I think uh, people will come to appreciate a royal visit well, that much more. I think, I, I think um, as dusk uh, falls more heavily <laughs> upon us, it may be time, Dan, to go back to you, where you may have some brighter lights. <laughs> Jacob rees Smog and Michael Cole live outside the media complex at Buckingham Palace. Let me explain what's going on in case you have just tuned in. Jacob was due to kick off his usual broadcast outside Buckingham Palace at 8pm tonight, uh, but there was a massive police operation after the Met Police confirmed a man was arrested after throwing a number of items suspected to be shotgun cartridges into the grounds of Buckingham Palace. They have been recovered and will be taken for specialist examination, according to the police. And the good news is there have been no reports of any shots fired or any injuries. But while Jacob Rees-Mogg was broadcasting live with Michael Cole, we heard some form of explosion take place from within the grounds of the palace. Hopefully we can listen to this. OK, we will try and get that for you soon. But significantly, King Charles was in residence at Buckingham Palace while this incident took place. I'm going to bring in now our two royal experts, Richard Fitzwilliams and Angela Levin. Angela, you've been at Buckingham Palace earlier today. What did you notice about the security operation? I thought it was over the top, actually. 
It was extraordinary. I had to have one um, thing around my neck and then another one of another colour, and they wouldn't let me move through the gates unless somebody came out with a yellow jacket for me. And it took ages to find. They wouldn't let me, despite the fact I had my face on this uh, card. This uh, So I just thought they were being ridiculous. There were hundreds of people there to help you go anywhere you want. But I think that in between you going up and saying to them, please, can you show me where, you know, GB News is, um, they were sort of a bit aimless. Um, certainly they weren't round the um, Buckingham Palace. All where I was was opposite in sort of little tents. Um, and I, I, it's just extraordinary, really. I think people weren't alert to what was going on. Um, they helped you if you asked them to, but otherwise they didn't seem to be actually able to um, make up their own mind whether you looked honest and you could go through or whether there was some doubt about you. But um, I must say it's it's quite a shock that it's happened. It's just really um, knocks you out, really, that just to think that something like that could happen, throwing cartridges in and um, a loud bang. Uh, the thought is terrifying. There were lots of police as well as these um, men and women who were showing you where to go, and not many people in in the um, in the park either. But um, huge queues to get your accreditation. Without the accreditation, you couldn't do anything. Okay, but, well, um, what it was just yeah. I mean, what difficult. is it indeed? But perhaps because the police have been concerned. I mean. In recent weeks, for example, the Daily Mirror reported that specialist cops had widened their remit for the coronation from concentrating on established terror groups and other fixated individuals to include members of peaceful campaign groups such as eco-protesters. But Richard Fitzwilliams, regardless of the security, clearly an individual tonight has been able to throw shotgun cartridges into the grounds of Buckingham Palace, even though King Charles III is in residence, does that pose questions about whether the security operation is strong enough? I'm afraid it very definitely does. And one of the problems, of course, we've been reading, as you say, all sorts of reports about precautions. I mean, it seems to me that, uh, firstly, when I heard, this was some time ago when it was announced that the route uh, that would be taken uh, to the ceremony was, of course, the one we know, and then that they were returning exactly the same route after the ceremony, whereas the Queen had, in fact, gone on a far longer route. So there's been a cut of about three quarters. And I can't help but think that they're part of this. Obviously, there's the need to control costs. But part of this very, very clearly is a fear of incidents or some form of incident that might um, very, very clearly could be very dangerous. And obviously, there are a very large number of people. We've, we, we know about some of the isolated incidents of egg throwing and the like, but there are people who have recently caused a great deal of concern and confusion by our behavior. Now, obviously, the person concerned, and we wait to hear details of exactly what's been happening and this so-called controlled explosion. Uh, I mean, this is, uh, is absolutely awful. I mean, when, when things back in 1981, six blank shots fired at the Queen, then the 1982, uh, Michael Fagan and that ghastly incident uh, in the palace and so forth. So th from time to time, there have been some, some of them quite bizarre. I mean, Aaron Barshak at um, Prince William's birthday gate be able to crash it. So, I mean, no security is absolutely perfect, but there's absolutely no doubt that there must be things that are badly wrong with it. Mm. OK, look, Richard and Angela, stand by. I just want to bring viewers up to date. Uh, the whole complex around Buckingham Palace, which has been started to uh, get into action before the coronation, we're four days away from the coronation, has tonight been evacuated and put into lockdown after an incident at 7pm at Buckingham Palace. 
uh, I'm going to share with you, this is exclusive footage actually from the aftermath of the event, but I'm going to share with you a statement from the Met Police. Officers quickly detained a man at around 1900 hours on the 2nd of May at, uh, after he approached the gates of Buckingham Palace and threw a number of items suspected to be shotgun cartridges into the palace grounds. These have been recovered and will be taken for specialist examination. There have been no reports of any shots fired or any injuries. The man has been arrested on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon and will be taken into custody. Cordons are in place after the man was also found to be in possession of a suspicious bag. Specialists are in attendance and will assess the item. But no sooner had that statement been released by the Met Police, we were live on air here on GB News with Jacob Rees Mogg reporting from a caravan in the Buckingham Palace media complex where there was a loud explosion, also heard by our head of programming, Ben Briscoe, who is outside Buckingham Palace. Now, no indication that there is anything nefarious with this explosion. It is quite possibly a controlled explosion, given the fact these items were sent into Buckingham Palace. Uh, so, Angela Levin, uh, this is obviously not the sort of incident police want to be dealing with so soon before the coronation. Yes. I think it will really sharpen everyone up. I mean, today, uh, one of the people said to me, we're sharpening up everything as the days go by, making it more and more difficult for anyone to come through without absolutely positive um, accreditation. And I think that this will really make them, will startle them, and they will be very, very alert. The trouble mm. then is that you can take ages to get into the park, um, and, you know, that's going to make it very difficult for us journalists. But, of course, that's not the main thing. The main thing is that um, the royals, and particularly King Charles, are safe. And so mm. you have to look out for these sort of one-off mm. Well, no, indeed. In, in, indeed. Really because the reality of, a co of course, this has to be a public event, but at the end of the day, a man has been able to throw something, something nefarious into the grounds of Buckingham Palace. Richard Fitzwilliams, I, I just want to check on something. Uh, the Royal Standard flying at Buckingham Palace, what does that mean? Because I am told it can mean that the King is also in residence at Clarence House, which is, of course, his home just down the road. He has never formally moved into Buckingham Palace, where renovations have been taking place for some months. So is it possible that even though we do see the Royal Standard flying tonight at Buckingham Palace, King Charles may be safely ensconced within the grounds of his home at Clarence House? Well, this is a possibility. I mean, that, well, as we know, Buckingham Palace is undergoing uh, renovations for over 10 years for some 369 million. And this, I'm not aware of the actual technicality here, but you may be correct because I understood certainly that they, he and, the, and uh, Queen Camilla had not moved in. So the residence could be technical whilst renovations are proceeding. Renovations, incidentally, as far as I know, are on schedule and on time, I would just make the quip that uh, if you look at the Palace of Westminster, the renovations there, perhaps they might uh, take a lesson out of the book of uh, Buckingham Palace. But I mean, the world's most famous palace, a processional walkway that we're all proud of. Yes, you may very well be right that they could be technically there. But uh, it is the sign, obviously, the Royal Standard up there that they are, but they could be in Clarence House. I mean, we may not hear. I don't mm. know whether this will be announced. Yes, um, because it has been reported in the past that deviating from the approach under the late Queen's reign, the Royal Standard will fly simultaneously over Buckingham Palace and Clarence House when the King is in London. Clarence House is, of course, on the Mall, just a short walk from Buckingham Palace. It is possible that even though the King was in residence at Buckingham Palace earlier today, earlier this afternoon, meeting the Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese, it's possible that when this incident took place at 7pm, he may have been home at Clarence House. Uh, thank you so much to our royal commentators, uh, Richard Fitzwilliams 
and Angela Levin. Uh, we're going to cross now to the international security expert, Henry Bolton. Henry, uh, what do you make of this incident at Buckingham Palace tonight? We are hearing the palace is no longer in lockdown. So perhaps whatever explosion we heard earlier, perhaps a controlled explosion by the police, uh, may have resolved the issue, which would be good news. lift a lockdown or remove a cordon uh, whilst there is any possibility whatsoever of an ongoing situation, an ongoing threat. Um, and they're not just looking at the threat to the king himself, although that's the priority and the royal family, but it's also uh, the, the threat to the infrastructure of the palace. But um, the king, I've, I've been hearing your, your speculation as to where the king is and so on. I mean, you know, the but the king will have been moved to a very secure area, whether it be in Clarence House or whether it be in Buckingham Palace. They will have an area within the palace designated and, and constructed to be secure for him, something that they can protect and where he will be, uh, like a keep of a castle, uh, he will be safe from, from all envisaged threats. And at the same time, if they were to move him, then it would indicate that they felt that even that wasn't sufficient. Because when you move the principal, the, the person you're protecting, then you don't control the environment uh, through which that person then has to move. You may be able to secure the immediate person uh, and the, possibly the vehicle he's travelling in, but the, the environment that that vehicle is travelling through, of course, you can't fully control. So you're increasing the risk to the principal. So it's very unlikely that they would move him. And if you saw them move him, then there's something particularly serious going on. OK, Henry Bolton, uh, stand by, because I want to play <laughs> you what happened earlier this hour. So to put this into context, what I'm about to show you, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who was due to broadcast his usual show at the top of the hour at 8 o'clock, was evacuated into a caravan, effectively, uh, which is where people take breaks and everything, uh, while broadcasting at Buckingham Palace for the coronation. And while he was broadcasting, uh, we heard in the background this very large uh, noise. Watch this. Anyway, we're just getting the latest word from uh, the uh, Metropolitan Police, and I don't know what it is. Uh, evacuate now. We're going to have to evacuate now. The police are live with us now, and I telling us that we've got to evacuate even from this. I don't this see how why we could possibly have to move. So I'm very sorry to say that it is um, good evening for me for the time being, as I think that was probably a controlled explosion in the background. That's what it sounded like to me. Uh, we will no doubt find out later. OK, so uh, that was, I believe, the moment when police forcibly evacuated uh, very calm, it has to be said, Jacob Rees-Mogg and Michael Cole from the scene. Uh, Henry Bolton, uh, we are told that the King is due to host a tea party at Buckingham Palace tomorrow. Do you think there needs to be extra security around Buckingham Palace over the next four days? Uh, the... There will obviously be security because this is a high profile event down. that we're looking at, the coronation. Um, it is going to attract all sorts of nutcases. It may be considered by, if you like, organised, um, more sort of proficient terrorist organisations around the world. All of these threats will be considered by the Metropolitan Police, by the Counterterrorism Police and by the security service. Um, but con in conjunction with all the others, you were talking earlier uh, about uh, the military police being on scene. Well, you know, this during these sort of events, it's normal, it's standard practice at the moment for there to be military police liaison working alongside the Metropolitan Police to create a, a seamless uh, uh, contact, if you like, and communication should the event arise where military support to the to the civil authority is required because the military have resources, whatever it, whether it be bomb disposal or whether it be uh, sort of counter terrorism or whatever it might be. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the security will be at its highest anyway. What will happen now is that everybody will be burning the midnight oil tonight trying to assess what has actually happened, who's responsible. And we should also bear in mind that 
in the past, there have been incidents where, a, you know, we're talking supposedly, reportedly, shotgun cartridges. We don't know whether they were in a bag or whatever. I suspect they might have been to trigger a, a controlled explosion, but um, or to trigger that decision. But um, this could even be a uh, could be considered by the security forces, or they will be considering it, the possibility that it's a test of their reaction and their response to give a potential sort of attacker more information. So they'll be assessing who's responsible for this, where they've come from, where they got the idea, what's motivating them, and so on. And they will assess then the increased risk, if any, to, uh, to the king and to anybody else involved in the celebrations and any events around it, including the Tea Party. I would suspect that they will be doing everything they can for the program to go on as planned without any changes. Any changes that there will be will be behind the scenes. You, you probably won't see them. OK, Henry Bolton, international security expert, thank you so much. We are now uh, taking a live shot, which we have been able to procure, of Buckingham Palace after this incident tonight uh, where there has been an arrest of one man for throwing shotgun cartridges into the grounds of Buckingham Palace. This man also uh, had some form of suspicious bag on him and has also been arrested on suspicion of possession of an offensive weapon. Uh, ben Briscoe, our director of programmes, uh, remains on location at Buckingham Palace. So, Ben Briscoe, uh, we're hearing mis mixed reports about whether the palace remains in lockdown. What can you tell us from the scene? Good evening, Dan. It's an ongoing uh, developing situation here on the ground at Buckingham Palace. We have been allowed back onto the roads around the palace. I'm currently standing right in front of the gate. There continues to be a ring of police officers that are surrounding the northerly of the um, front-facing gate at the palace. In your picture, that will be on the right-hand side of your screen. There appears to be some sort of bag or package by that gate, and just moments ago, they were sweeping up uh, part of that package. As we know, there was, there was the sound of an explosion uh, in the last half an hour here at Buckingham Palace. But I, I'm standing right in front of those gates, a ring of about 25 police officers surrounding the northerly uh, of, of the big gates that sort of face out uh, towards the mall. Great stuff, Ben Briscoe, our Director of Programmes. Of course, we will keep you updated on this developing situation of an arrest at Buckingham Palace and sounds of a controlled explosion. I'm back with you at 9 o'clock. Evening, Alex Deacon here with your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. Most places will again be dry tomorrow, a bit brighter for most, better chance of seeing a bit more in the way of sunshine. The breeze will be on the increase. High pressure is dominating at the moment, keeping things largely dry. That is going to change as we go towards the weekend. But for the time being, as I said, that high pressure keeping it largely dry. There are a few light drizzly showers across southern and central Scotland this evening. And later in the night, we could just see a little bit of rain creeping across Northern Ireland. But as I said, most places will be dry. The cloud breaking up a little bit across the south, allowing temperatures to dip down into single figures. Further west, mostly staying at 9 to 11 Celsius. On to Wednesday, and again, dry for the majority. A bit of patchy rain clearing from Northern Ireland. We'll just drift up the western side of Scotland, so a little damp here, but... Uh, most places dry and a brighter day for the bulk of England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Better chance of seeing at least